Okay, so a good number of people have been talking about agency and decision making and uh, choice uh, and also been talking about free will, but I think trying to distance themselves from the notion of free will not because of all the religious dogma that comes along with it. And I think people are right to point out some of the limitations of this superlative notion of free will. I mean, that does have a kind of super fantasticalness to it where it may be that people's sense of agency and choice and their, their again their conscious experience of freedom is what you know precipitated religious feeling it's not that religious dogma created a notion of freedom and choice and agency and then shook the finger at people and told them now you be careful and don't do bad with this free chosen choice I think instead it was more that as this organism emerged into the capacities for reflection and forethought and the in the conspiring of memory and imagination and the way that communication technologies opened up you know a reasonable collectively directed toward future and a, a collectively agreed upon um, sense of the past all of these things they've they were what led to needing religion as a sanctioning agent for an organism who was embarrassed or guilty or awkward for having unsanctified or unsanctioned practices engagements that is organisms to the degree that they don't have any sense of conscience agency or conscience uh, conscious choice they wouldn't have any need for religion religion you know springs up as a uh, I guess a, a set of beliefs that are meant to remove the terror from that organism who doesn't have the benefit of just you know largely guiding action by instinctual uh, drives by you know, it's like because people experienced choice, they wanted someone else to bear the weight of that choice. And so the religious dictates were ways of hiding their own agency from themselves, which slowly came to be, you know, the various forms of cult, which and I, I've posted other videos on this. I'll see if I can post a link down to some of this. But I think a much better way to come at these issues is to really problematize the the distinction between mattergy, uh, mattergy, matter and energy and information on the various levels that it occurs. I think that too many people, they're, they're very quick to just conflate all of reality as if it's simply matter energy. And that's really all it is. As if emergent dependent hierarchies, right? Uh, what's the, the Belgian chemist, the you know, dissipated structures. There's orders of complexity that emerge out of nature and those kinds of complexities, they're not to be found at the level of matter energy. It's sort of like, you know, the rules of a game are very real, but they're not at the same level as the game. See, I think part of it has to do with the way that we think about opposites. It's very Aristotelian. We have a tendency to think that opposites occur at the same plane or level, and we seem not to see the hierarchical dependence that often is going on. So people will say, um, you know, are you determined or are you free? Or they'll do, you know, is it brain or is it mind? Or they do the nature nurture. And as if those are just opposites on the same plane, where in fact they're dependent hierarchies, right? And you, you can see that they're dependent hierarchies. You perform what Anthony Wilden calls the extinction rule. You just imagine one side of the opposition instantly you know, banished, you know, you just you, you ex make the one side extinct. Does the other side go extinct as well? So I think it does that that our experience of freedom emerges out of a deterministic flow of matter and energy. But the level of information doesn't occur at the same level as the matter energy in the same way that you know, the nature nurture or the brain mind, you know, is the mind the same as the brain? I don't think it is. But if you get rid of mind, you don't get rid of brain, you get rid of brain, mind disappears. There is no mind without a brain. There is no nurture without nature. 
See, I think some of these distinctions that people introduce, they're, they're false dichotomies, they're actually dependent hierarchies, and once we start to see what a hierarchy is, it starts to become apparent that at the level of matter energy, yeah, there is no freedom. Of course not. You just have inorganic matter following out various physical laws. Now, some people are going to try to smuggle in some notion of freedom by going to quantum mechanics. Is freedom going to be found in quantum mechanics? I myself am going to say no. Uh, it, to me, that, that's, that's the wrong way of coming at it because I think there you might as well give arguments that the, the again, ran, randomness is not the kind of free free decision, you know, conscious choice making that we have, but it's also, it doesn't explain the localized pockets of, a, I mean, quantum mechanics applies to everything throughout the cosmos, but I don't know if we want to say that everything out the cosmos has the experience of agency, choice, guilt, remorse, anxiety, all of those kinds of feelings that are appropriate for the organism who experiences those, those dynamics. Okay, so I think part of the problem is, again, this, we, we need to make a distinction between levels. And I think there are emergent levels, right? It's the, there's like dissipative structures that have emerged. And it goes from the inorganic to the organic. And then out of the organic, you get the, you know, the cultural. And so, I mean, there's at least those three levels where you're going to have, again, something like just inorganic matter. And I think inorganic matter if it has any kind of information, which I'm, I'm roughly going to say, you know, well, well, what do we mean by information? Well, it, it doesn't seem to have information properly. It, it seems to be just subject to entropy and the initial stage. I mean, see, energy and matter cannot be created or destroyed. We don't want to say that about information, though. Information is created and destroyed. That's, you know, and it's information is created and destroyed on multiple levels. Okay, so there's at least the indexical level of information, which the clearest case is DNA. I mean, DNA has, you know, actual, how do you want to say it? There's chemical sets of instructions that are like rules for not only activating certain parts of the genes and, you know, the, the there's, there's robust meta-instructions that are part of the operating system of DNA, but DNA then has some, again, set of instructions that are a different order of abstraction than the kind of products that, that get reproduced out of, um, out of that genetic sequence. But even at that level, <clears throat> Casey, is there agency or choice there? Well... At the level of life, there seems to be something qualitatively different than the kind of necessity at the level of the inorganic. That although we don't yet see again, freely chosen agency, there does seem to be at least the beginning of information, and information is at a different order of abstraction than pure energy matter. Now, it, I'm going to see if I can't illustrate that sort of clearly here. If you, if you look up, oh, right, right up here. If you look up here, I have I've shot so many videos with the Escher print above me. Now, the Escher print's got the hands drawn the hands. You know, at the level of energy matter, there's no paradox there. There's just an image that just is what it is, but it's by organismal goal-seeking. Organismal goal-seeking, that is an organism through its sensory capacities is able to introduce a kind of time to that piece that the simultaneousness of the image, the simultaneity of the image suddenly is looked at with a wandering eye glance that paradoxically makes it seem as if there is, um, again, a hand creating another hand in time, but they're both just there simultaneously. The image is at a different level than the energy matter. It's a piece of information, which is a very different level of energy, or I'm sorry, different level of information than my words, hand drawing hand. I mean, that's not even iconic. But I mean, there, there's indexical level iconic and symbolic. And I'll, you know, I can see if I can post a, a level or a video down to 
uh, had video down to the discussion on paradoxes I, I post recently. I mean, try to think of the expression, you know, this sentence is in English. You know, if I say this sentence is in English, if you translate it into any other language, it becomes false. And what that means is that there's a code at one level, and the code is even at a different level than the energy matter. So there's an energy matter, which is the physical acoustical blast. And then there is the code, which is, a, you know, this set of standardized phonemic units within English that produce, again, this, this utterance, right, at the level of a code. But then the proposition conveyed by the code is at a, a different level yet, right? I mean, to see that information is at multiple levels what, once people start to realize that reality has multiple levels, and this isn't a super fantastical claim. The claim, again, is that reality occurs at more than one level. It's not that all reality is just at the level of oppositions and of, of things at one plane contesting back and forth. It's, there are nested hierarchies of dependency, and those, those dissipative structures that are dependent upon... Um, earlier forms, they're, they're generally more complex, they have an increased complexity but a greater dependency, and I think, you know, part of the problem, let's go back, is that, is that there is no information without organismal goal seeking. Let's sort of force the issue. There seems to be no information without organismal goal seeking. That is, if information is coded variety, okay, so there's variety and then information is coded variety, without the ability to have a, an, or without an organism to say what is the coded variety and what is the uncoded variety, you don't have any information. I mean, the, the information is the product of goal seeking. See, I think you, know, you can sort of round this discussion off with, I think, the discussion about freedom and agency and choice comes to a head in the contemporary crisis of action. And I think many people, they want to look around in the world and then get all the information and then from the information set to their goals. That is, they're going to try to develop their goals out of the information. But it doesn't work that way. It's actually backward. The information can appear as information only given certain goals and that's why it was sort of smuggled in in that example you know when it sort of says well I just want to get the information before I have my goals I want to make sure that I'm well informed before I start setting myself to goals well no that's already a goal and that's producing information see as soon as people realize that organismal goal seeking and I mean so there's the inorganic the organic and then there's culture at the very level of life itself information starts to occur at indexical levels. By the time you get to humans, you know, you have indexical, iconic, and symbolic levels. And those kinds of information, they give us that sense of agency and that sense of choice. And it's partly because matter energy is driven along from the past, whereas choice is, it has to do with a running ahead of oneself by way of information. See, the information allows me to have representative values that um, I can navigate toward goals. I mean, organisms, they thrive upon information, and that's how they, they have a kind of negative entropy. I mean, information is a negative entropy in that it, it structures information inside the organism in certain ways, and it, it creates disorder around the organism, right? It, it increases the entropy in the, uh, the open systems environment. But as an open system, we continuously export our entropy in order to continue various forms of, of goal seeking and development. Um, you know, I th there is such a difference between constraints and the kinds of constraints and the way that constraints enable decision making and choice within open systems that deal with information it's very different than physical closed systems that really again only deal with matter and energy i would like to see 
you know, or I, I would want to, how would I say it? I think there's a challenge for anyone who is going to try to reduce the human experience of agency and uh, of, of free will, of, of all, all, all those kinds of things. If you're going to try to say that they're not, they're not part of human experience because there's no room for them. I guess I'm, I'm skeptical of, of a kind of reduction toward everything being nothing but energy matter. Now we can be energy matter like all the way down, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't occur at another level. Try to think of the old lady and the young girl, that, that visual gestalt that I think we've all seen. You know, there's this little image where there's just one image there, and if you look at it one way, you see an old woman, and then you look at it another way, you see a young girl. The fact that you can see those two different images from that one piece of energy matter shows you that the information is occurring at a different order of abstraction. It's a different level. And information is where that experience of agency choice lies. So are we free or are we determined? That's a false question because they're at different levels of analysis, they're dependent hierarchies, and we can be both determined and free. Okay, thanks.